Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Um, and then we are confirming that two individuals have been fatally injured. And uh, the incident took place in Campbell Hall, which is part of our Towers Complex. As Sherry Knight said, at this point, none of our students, faculty, or staff have been injured. They are sheltering in place at this current time. And at this point, our campus is safe. We believe this situation involves a domestic type incident. The person of interest that we are looking for actively at this point is a James Eric Davis. He's a black male, approximately 19 years of age, weighing about 135 pounds. A photograph will be released shortly of uh, Mr. Davis. And we're asking that our community members Call us. Call 911 if you see this individual, and he should be considered armed and dangerous if you encounter Mr. Davis. Police agencies are actively trying to locate the individual. He was last seen shortly after the shooting, running in a northbound direction from our towers complex. At that time, he was wearing a dark hoodie. It is unknown what clothing he may be wearing now because we have located a number of articles of clothing along the railroad grade. We have tactical teams from the Mount Pleasant region comprised of the Central Michigan University Police, Mount Pleasant Police, the Sheriff's Office that are actively looking for this individual. We also have assets from the Michigan State Police that are assisting with officers, air support, and with tactical members. The CMU Police Department did have contact with the involved individual last evening. At some point in the evening, he was transported to McLaren Hospital due to what the officers believed may be a drug-related type uh, incident, you know, an overdose or a bad reaction to, to drugs. At that point, he was released to the hospital staff. Um, we're, we're calling it a, a family type domestic issue at this point, and that's all we're releasing at this time. I cannot confirm the deceased at this point. What I can confirm that it did not involve faculty, staff, or our students. I'd say if there was an overwhelming, um, overwhelming emotion that I had, it was definitely sadness. Lockdown started right around nine o'clock. And then the only time they let us out of our dorm room was uh, right around 11 or 1.30. And that was right when they had our lunch served in the cafeteria. But they said that as soon as you got done with lunch, you had to go right back to your dorm room. At this time, like they're really the only procedure that they have for long, uh, getting out and coming back in is that you have to check in at the front of the hall every single time you go back into the hall. But they really only want you to come check in uh, to go into the hall to like bring you more stuff out so that you're like, if you're leaving, then you're like, at least supposed to be leaving for good. It's definitely going to be a different kind of feeling. I feel like everyone's going to be a little bit more on edge coming back. I have a little bit of feeling that there's going to be a little bit more police presence on campus, but that might just be for safety reasons. But other than that, I think there's going to be a little bit of a sadness over like over the campus just because this happened here and everyone it's just kind of a little bit surreal to be honest junior through students who attended class with him one student who did not want to be identified told us that davis often talked about a gun oh, he always had a gun he'd bring it up every now and then and he even said something about a Central Michigan University sophomore who spoke to us by phone said he would often see James Eric Davis Jr. playing basketball or playing video games in his room. But the student told us Davis had stopped going to class and seemed to be smoking a lot of marijuana. I know he dropped all his classes because he's 
The 19-year-old from Plainfield, Illinois, does not appear to have a previous criminal record in Michigan. His Twitter feed is full of selfies, as well as some strong language, but no obvious threats of violence. Last night, though, campus police were called to an incident involving Davis. The officers believe maybe a drug-related type uh, incident, an overdose or a bad reaction to, to drugs. Police tell us Davis was released from the hospital shortly before the shooting. They also don't know yet how Davis's weapon went undetected. We do not have metal detectors, but it is our policy that the student, staff, faculty cannot have weapons on our campus. The students we spoke to said there was no indication that he was having problems with his parents, Diva Davis and Bellwood police officer James Davis Sr. How many more incidents like this got to happen to too close to home? Continue now. our Team 7 coverage now with uh, the Now Detroit's Kim Russell, who spoke to one mom whose son was a witness to this tragedy. Kim, I can't imagine what that family's going through as well. Tell us more of what you've learned. I absolutely cannot imagine being her this morning. She says it was around 9 o'clock this morning. She looks at her phone. She has a text message from her son, and it says, Mom, I think my roommate just killed his mom. Now, he lived in the Campbell Residence Hall, which, as you've been hearing, is in the Towers dormitories here on Central Michigan University's campus. The campus has been locked down for hours. It was locked down for hours as police searched for this shooter and then developed a plan to let students leave safely. Now, we have learned that he allegedly killed not just his mom, but his dad. The roommate who was texting his mom, the mom that I spoke to, they're from Detroit and she spoke to me as she waited to be reunited with her son. He was in his dorm room sleeping, and he said another one of the roommates ran into his bedroom, and they locked the door, and he said that he heard five shots, and he said that um, he called the police. I just told him to stay in his dorm. When the police did come and, and finally get them out, he said that the father was across his bedroom door. I guess he had to step over. Oh, God. When we last heard from police, they were focused on an area north of campus. Hopefully someone will spot him and they can end this lockdown at the school. And I mean, we've literally spent the entire day trying to research this young man and try to figure out, you know, exactly. Is there anything in this in his background that would give any clues to this? And there doesn't seem to be anything. No, and a domestic situation. Yeah. No other students impacted, at least in terms of uh, shots fired or, or injuries in that regard. Still, no less tragic uh, of the result. Um, it's my school, too, so, you know, your heart uh, just broken over the fact that this would happen at CMU, that it would happen at any school in our state, uh, whether it be university or or school at any level. Just a sad, sad, tragic thing. And certainly still a lot of questions to be asked and answered about sure. how that gun was in that dorm and how he had that gun. And where is that young man at this hour?